Hi guys, I'm Sam Ferrara and I'm a type 1 diabetic. And I'm Alex and I'm not. Um, and today we thought it'd be a great time to talk about some glucagon. Um, glucagon, a new product was actually just approved uh, earlier this week on the 22nd. And you know, what better time than now to, to talk about glucagon um, as a topic on the show. So let's make like a lancet and get stuck in. <laughs> Let's get stuck in, babe. All right. So what is glucagon and what is it used for? Yeah. So glucagon, um, at least in my experience, is an injectable that is used in the case of severe low blood sugar, severe hypoglycemia, um, something you kind of use for emergencies. Okay. Um, and hypoglycemia is what again? So hypoglycemia is a fancy word for a low blood sugar. Um Normal low blood sugar is under 70, but severe hypoglycemia is generally under 54. Um, lowest I've ever been in my lifetime is 32, and let me tell you, it was not a good feeling. What happened? It, you know, I was actually, I was very young. I was um, down the shore with my dad, and he actually felt me shaking in my sleep and sweating and woke me up. Um, and I had no idea this was even happening, which is some really scary stuff and probably a time I should have used glucagon. <laughs> Oh, no, I mean, that sounds frightening. So, I mean, that happened when you were really low. Has that happened again recently, the older you got? or No, and honestly, with new diabetes technology like the Dexcom, um, it alerts me as if I'm under 70. Mm -hmm. So typically, I would never get that low unless I slept through it, which we know I have once or twice. But again, don't go much lower than 60 these days, and, even if it does happen. Mm -hmm. And hypoglycemia, when it's severe, is, is really severe. When hypoglycemia is severe, it can, I mean, the worst complications you can have are, you know, you can have a seizure or go into a coma, which is something nobody wants to do. Um, for me personally, when I'm low, I get that, that sweating, shaking, anxiety feeling. Um, and that's probably why I'm super agitated when I'm low is because you're kind of feeling like you're, you're having a panic attack almost and your heart starts to race. Um, I know there's some other symptoms that we had looked up earlier, um, I would say this is an excuse yeah. for you to say you were agitated, but this is like an actual <laughs> real thing to be aware of. And it, it seems like, you know, even though you do monitor, like there's those moments where you don't get that information from your glucose monitor. Yep. yep. Especially when I'm in workouts or sleeping. Those are the two times I always keep my phone out when I work out so that I can see it alarm. But by then, and knowing that the Dexcom's like a little bit behind, about 20 minutes, by then I could be in that danger zone, um, which is always scary. Um, so what is like the best way to avoid hypoglycemia? Stay monitored, keep to a schedule, uh, make sure that you are planning, pre-planning. I mean, I have actually pretty much stopped running because you need about 90 minutes preparation for any time you're going to go on a run or you're going to go low. So I've changed my method of exercise. I exercise at the same time every day. I try to really watch my eating, my drinking. And when I say drinking, I mean alcohol because that will spike you and then drop you. So these are all things you just need to be very aware of. Okay. So let's um, talk a little bit about glucagon, dive into it a little bit more, talk about some of the products. Yeah. So have you had to use glucagon or do you know somebody who has had to use it? Have you given it to anybody? So um, I've actually used the glucagon shot a lot, not on myself, but to show my coworkers uh, what they need to do in case for whatever reason I am on the floor, um, it's time to go get that glucagon. So I, I've actually shown the use of it into like an orange at almost every single agency I've worked at. However, I've only needed it once when I was very young and I just had a low blood sugar that would not go up. It had been hours of treating it and it was just not happening. My mom had a friend over who happened to be a doctor and, and he did the thing, but the, the thing is kind of annoying and I'm sure that's kind of where we're getting at which is you take the syringe full of liquid and you spray it into the bottle full of not liquid powder. It's like instant milk. <laughs> you, put the, you put the syringe in, flip it over, then you got to make sure there's no boobles um, and pull it back out. <laughs> Michael Bublé is in your... <laughs> Tracking. Yes, got it. Um, and, and then you have to find, I believe it's a muscle to put it into. I don't think you're allowed to like do that like fatty area. It has to go directly into like an arm or leg, butt uh, kind of muscle. And that's that. It's a, it is a big scary shot and there are lots of steps, which, you know, for a diabetic or someone who's been around needles a lot is fine. Um, but assuming that you're probably getting it at a time where you're not administering, I think it's a lot more complicated. I, I mean, it is. And it's so funny when I think about it. It wasn't until I just decided to do this research that 
I became familiar with the idea of administering this. And the one we're talking about is the glucagon emergency kit. Um, And it's actually great that finally, as of 2020, there is a generic version of glucagon, which is really great for access. The only good part of 2020 (laughs) is the generic. (laughs) But, you know, it's really great to have this access. And, you know, one of the things that I always think about with this product is, like, I've never tried to use it or practiced it. And it is complicated, right? You have to take the syringe out all the while, and, you know, and you you empty it into the vial and you pull the liquid out. All the while, you know, you could possibly be on the ground. Yep. In a seizure, in a coma. Um, and, you know, I was reading that you have to lay them on their side. And, you yeah, know, it sure. actually could make you throw up. Is that where you were getting yeah, at that? Yeah. So because my understanding, I, I'm not a doctor, uh, but what, how it's been explained to me is that it actually releases your liver's sugar storage. And that's how you kind of restabilize. But when that happens, it can actually cause you to vomit. Um, it did not happen to me, um, but I have heard that it's pretty common. Okay. And I think we're going to definitely do an episode on yeah. diving into how to administer glucagon uh, specifically, and we'll practice on an orange. But, you know, for today's <laughs> case, we're going to talk about some other uh, glucagons available. So, you know, shifting over, you know, that's what we have, the glucagon emergency kit. Mm-hmm. Um, it is difficult to administer. Um, it, it sits in the fridge. You know, there, there's it's hard to keep on hand. Um, it's pretty big, too. Yep. And right here, speaking of it sitting in the fridge... Write your uh, expiration date big on it because you want to make sure you have one that's up to date. I know because it's emergency, we have a tendency to forget about it. And then all of a sudden what you needed, it's like expired four years ago and isn't any help. Um, So just a word to the wise. Um, The new product was actually just uh, announced by Zeeland Pharma. It's a small biotech and it's called Zegalog, Zegalogy. Um, But it was just a Who is she? Who is it? Uh, it was just approved on the 22nd, um, and what's very different about this versus the emergency kit is that this is an auto-injector pen, um, and it's also available in a pre-filled syringe. Oof. Well, as you know, one of my biggest, weirdest fears um, about someone else injecting me is someone injecting me with air. I read a book once. I know this is heli- like makes no sense, but I read a book once where a woman kills her husband by giving him a diabetes needle full of air. Um, and putting, like, it goes to his heart. and blah. Anyway, I talked to a doctor about it. There's not enough air in a needle to kill you. Like, Sam, get over it. But it's still something that sits in my head. Um, so I think it's great talking about ziggalagaligalog. Um, <laughs> ziggalog. Is that how you say it? Sure. Um, ziggalog. The best part about it is that I think that they're finally starting to cater to the caregiver um, by making it auto-injectable and pre-filled. It kind of to your point, if you're in this moment of stress, um, it it just makes it easier. Okay, go like an EpiPen, right? Mm -hmm. Like why why can't we have a diabetes EpiPen? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, this is very fast. They they say people saw results in as little as 10 minutes and um, we're fully 99% recovered by 15 minute mark, which is pretty quick. Um, You know, it's funny that you were talking about the different modes of administration because there are a few other products that are really interesting. Um, The next one to talk about is Baximi. Um, and this was approved in 2019. It is the first and only nasal spray injection hmm. for glucagon. Same product, same ingredient, but really? a nasal spray. So that's super interesting to me. And I'm not sure my like comfort level. Yep. Um, it, I feel like if you, so again, we, we consider, you know, a severe low blood sugar is under 54. When I'm 54, I'm, I'm talking and going like I, I'm not necessarily in that emergency situation. So I could see it that range, maybe it being all right. But in my head, if you were like on the ground, um, I'm not sure how much like inhaling you're doing or if you're going to do it at the right time or if it's going to all get in. Mm-hmm. It sounds like there's a lot of room for error. Um, I'm not speaking clinically. I have no idea how it works. Maybe it just sits in your nose and absorbs. I have no idea. Yeah, and I think um, a lot of but, people do have those same thoughts. Yeah. You know, and I was diving into it a little bit deeper, uh, and it actually seems like something I would be interested in having around the house because it's so easy to use, uh, and you can use it whether you're congested or not. The uh, other thing is it doesn't come in like a, an Afrin container. Like these are just single-use shots into the nose. Um, so it's actually, you know, from that standpoint, sounded a little bit more comforting if you were 
seizing, for instance, to be able to do that rather than yeah. the needle, which is a little intimidating for Is this myself. whole episode your pitch to me to get the nasal spray? Because I'm starting to feel a theme. Would you like the nasal spray? Let's talk about access. <laughs> you know, we'll see if we can get a hold of it. Um, but, you know, it, it is interesting because you could use it when somebody's passed out. You know, yeah. I was a little weirded out about the whole nasal thing, too. I was like, is it going to work? Um, but yeah. it, almost 100% of patients responded within that 30-minute mark. That's really great to know. Yeah. And honestly, like, I feel like a lot of times we like to think one way or another. So to hear, you know, the information behind it is always super helpful because I, I'm imagining, like, the same way I'm with Flonase, where I'll, I'll put it in and sneeze it out. And I'm like, did I even get any Flonase? <laughs> so definitely a concern, but good to hear. Yeah. Um, and the uh, last product that we're talking about today is uh, Gvoke, which was also approved in 2019. And this is really centered around that more EpiPen experience. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it also does have another pre-filled syringe. That seems to be the standard now, except for ours, which is an emergency <laughs> kit, which is really hard ours. to do in an emergency. But hey. Um, but the interesting thing about Gvoke is what they're touting is um, you can recover quickly, but you don't peak too high. Okay. Which is actually really interesting because all of a sudden you go from these symptoms of low blood sugar to taking glucagon and then going to these symptoms of incredibly high blood sugar yeah. that won't come back down. Which is why I've always avoided using glucagon. Like to me, and not to say that sitting around eating Skittles is any better because Skittles are my go-to and every once in a while even they'll throw me into the stratosphere. Um, but definitely something that, that I would save for a super emergency because – in my head, it's going to like ruin my day, right? Like if you're starting super low and then you go really high and then you spend all day going up and down, you just feel like crap. I mean, <laughs> let's just call a spade a spade. Where'd that Southern accent come from? <laughs> it's new. Okay. Did you like it? Yeah, that's fine. We can incorporate that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, those are the products I wanted to talk to you about. I mean, I'm really interested in checking out the nasal spray. I'd like to talk to our doctor next time you know, yeah. and see what's going on. Um, but you know, what's nice is having the options. Options are always great because not everyone is the same. People handle things differently. Some, some people might feel better knowing that they have this unmixed item that they get to physically inject and they know that they're doing it and it's very tangible. Whereas other people want everything ready to go and just like stick it. And I guess in our case, you want to put things up my nose. So <laughs> <laughs> we can work on that too. There's, there's a, what is it? There's a pot for... A lid for every pot. There you go. <laughs> um, so everybody out there, remember when it comes to uh, hypoglycemia, you should be hyper vigilant or hypo. Hypo vigilant. Hypo vigilant. I like what you did there. Okay, sounds good. So we'll be sure to be hypo vigilant, <laughs> um, and we'll be uh, following up with some additional videos on the different administration products and diving deeper into these different uh, options. Yeah. Well, and on that note, if you're hypoglycemic, hyperglycemic, or just plain hyper, have a great week, and you can diet to it. <laughs>